Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to Fusion 315 Increment Webinar Course Series. Thank you for joining today's session, Design Best Practices for Design Success Using uh, Assemblies. So today we have Badvi, who works as an education program specialist at Autodesk. He will navigate the best practices to handle assemblies in Fusion 360 today. Hey, Badri, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time and being here with us. Over to you. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm the same person who you have seen on the web page, all that. So this is my quarantine look. So <laughs> don't get confused, the same person. So first, I would like to thank Parun for giving this opportunity. And I'm, I'm also following all this webinar series. It is going really great. And today, I'm very much excited because I'm uh, conducting this webinar based on my favorite topic, which is Fusion 360 assembly. So uh, I hope most of you will, are already like uh, experienced some of the technology about uh, assembly design and all. So what is uh, great about Fusion 360, how it is so useful when it comes to product design or automobile design or any machine uh, related uh, component design, how it is really useful. So there are two different methods when it comes to design. Let me just share my presentation. So um, hope uh, everyone can see my screen. Yeah, this looks good now. Perfect. So there are two approach when it comes to um, assembly modeling or assembly design. So one is uh, bottom up method, another one is top down. So uh, normally people ask, which one is good? It depends exactly. So depending on the inputs, what you have. So whether you have all the inputs related to the dimension, documentation, everything, then you can go ahead with the bottom up method. When it comes to top down, uh, where you really do not have the exact dimension or idea about the components, what you are going to design, but only you have an idea about the overall product, the final product, imagination. In that case, the top-down method will help you to come out with the proper solution. So when it comes to bottom-up, here you can see in the image. So you start designing every individual part. So in this case, you need to have all the proper dimensions. So when you have proper dimension, when you have designed proper parts, then only you can assemble it. So right, so first part, then sub-assembly, then you go for mine assembly. Whereas top-down assembly, so first you are going to start with main assembly, maybe the overall, the body part first, then depending on the space availability and the shape, you are going to design the sub-assemblies, then you are going ahead with the parts. So how it works in various segments. Here I've taken just uh, two examples here. So one is a uh, very simple product design one, another one is automobile. Um, if you look at this uh, product design, so where this is a uh, sewing machine, so where designer have an idea about the aesthetic look of this particular product and the comfortness when it comes to holding and all, he have the basic idea about the shape. So what he is going to do first, he is going to design the body shape. Once after that, depending on the space availability inside, he is going to adjust the remaining components. He is going to design the remaining components. So this is one way. So when it comes to car, for example, first we are going to design the outermost body part of the car surface. So once it is ready, so once the aesthetic look or the shape of that car, the concept car is ready, then I start building component inside the car, whether it is engine, whether it is axle, whether it is chassis or the interior. So first we design the car body. So this is one simple example about top down. We design the car body, then we start continuing designing the component inside it, right? So same in most of the cases. So today I'm going to just show with very simple example. This is an upper press. So I'm using this for a couple of years, so I feel very comfortable showing this particular example. And uh, this is very, very easy, and you can understand what exactly it is. So what mechanism you need to have in this particular uh, assembly, I hope you can easily understand that. So for example, I'm going to rotate this pinion shaft, so using the 
So this very simple mechanism, so, so that you can easily understand what exactly it is. So I'm going to start the design on Fusion 360. Uh, very exciting thing with Fusion 360, there are no different file format for different parts. That means you don't need, it's, there is nothing like a different file format for parts, different file format for your assembly. So the same file format, you have three file format for every single thing. So now, this is a new file here. So I just saved this file as test. So this is the version one. And in this particular file, I'm going to bring my components and I'm going to assemble and I'm going to design everything on the same screen. I always get excited because of a couple of reasons. One is uh, the same file format. And the second best thing, I can import component from any file format. So even including, even if it is an AutoCAD TWG file, if it is a 3D model, I can import that file to Fusion 360. I can use it for my assembly purpose, right? So first, I already designed this one particular arbor frame, so which I'm going to insert to my new file. So insert into current design. Right? So it is asking whether I want to change the orientation. So I don't want to change any of this. So I'm just going to select, okay. So here, this is one component. So the main component. So I have imported to my assembly, assembly file and here. So if you look at this, so software will ensure this is a connected file where if I edit any of this component, any feature here on this uh, main file, so automatically that will be updated on this particular assembly file also, even though if it is, it is same file format, that is the advantage. So now, after importing this particular one, so first I'm going to ground this particular component. So basically like before we assemble, it is very important to ground the main component first. For example, if you are trying to open a bottle, so you have to hold the bottle first before you open the cap. So you need to hold it. So any one component has to be fixed so that easily you can assemble the remaining component and you can analyze the relative motion, right? So, so I have grounded this one particular component here. And what next? So here, basically, I don't have the dimension when I started designing this particular model, okay? So after designing this particular thing, now I have realized, so I need to have one plate here, which will cover the inside mechanism, okay? But I don't have the dimension of this particular face, but I have designed this particular frame. So now I want to design one face plate on the top of this. If I go to new file and try to design, so I have to come back here, measure this dimension, then I have to go there, create the sketch instead of all that. So Fusion 360 will help you with this top-down assembly method. So basically all I have to do, I'm going to create a sketch. This is the assembly file. In the same file, I'm going to create sketch. I'm going to select this face to create the sketch, okay? And now, very simple, I don't have to sketch anything. I'm just going to project the face. Okay, you can see here, I have projected the 3D face so that I can have these sketches. I don't have to draw it again. After that, I can select okay, and I have completed my sketch. This is what taking reference from the existing 3D model. So that's true within the assembly file. So now, after taking this, now very simple, I'm going to extrude, selecting all these face to extrude because I have already projected. So software will recognize the faces. So I'm selecting all these face, right? And I'm going to extrude this to 10 millimeter. Okay, so now after this, I'm going to turn this above frame visibility off so that I can see this face plate properly. Then I'm going to turn on this sketch. Again, extrude, I'm selecting this particular face and I need to cut this. I want to remove the material, so about five millimeter.
right? So then I want to create a fillet. So I'm going to fillet this edge, this loop and the fillet radius, I give it as three. So basically within a minute, I have designed one component with the reference of the existing 3D model, right? So here is my 3D model, the existing one, with taking the reference, I have designed this one, right? So now, after this, so if I want to change the color of this component, so I'm just going to change this color, I will apply some color here, right? So to apply the color, so I hope you have gone through all the basics, so I'm not taking much time on this. To apply the color, you have to select appearance, short key, I'm just using A. For extrude, I'm using E. So I'm just using all the available short keys, okay? So now, after creating this, one more component I want to create here. So that is the table plate on the top of this. So to create table plate, again, I'm going to sketch on the top of this. Again, I'm going to take the reference of this existing sketch. So project, I'm going to project this circle, this edge, this one, and this one, okay? Now I'm going to create a circle from this center to this edge, okay? And now I'm going to create a pattern or sim a simple language, we call it as array. So this circular pattern. I'm going to create circular pattern with these three edges, okay? So that I can rotate the table plate. So I'm selecting the center point here. This is the center and the number of segment I need four, right? So finish sketch. Again, I'm going to extrude this one, okay? I'm selecting all these faces, multiple face, then the extrude thickness, I just give it as 10. Right? So if you observe here, so it is not taking much time because I don't have to give dimension and all. And all these sketches are completely constrained, right? You can see this black color. I hope you went through all this uh, basic information on the second uh, webinar only. Uh, you have noticed once the sketch is completely constrained, it will turn to black. So now every single sketch here, it is constrained. So that means in future, as I mentioned, if I edit, the main component, the part above frame, automatically these two components will also get updated. So you don't have to spend much time on editing again. For example, this frame size is something. So the next project, you have to increase the size of the frame. When you increase the size of this frame, automatically these components will also get updated. That is the advantage of Fusion 360 and also using top-down assembly method. Right, so now coming back to this, here, what I'm going to do, these two are not component. This face plate and this table plate, these two are not components, clear? These two are just a body inside this file. If you look at this browser, body, so this is body one and this is body two. So how to convert these two into component? That is more important. So this is very important to understand how we are going to convert this into component and save it as different files so that we can use it for 2D drawing or for manufacturing purpose, we have to save it as a different file, right? So selecting these two component, when you right click, Software will give you option, create component from bodies. Very, very simple. I've created sketch using the existing reference. I've given thickness. So software converted it into body. Now that two body, I'm going to convert that into components. So within the same file, now there is no body. So these two considered as components, same as the frame. And this component name, I'm going to edit. This is faceplate. And this is table plate. 
sorry. Mm. Right. So two components. Now, after converting this into component, so is this location is proper or not? Because once I convert this into component, this will be having different orientation or this doesn't have any relation in terms of joints with the frame. So I need to give, I need to give joints between these components so that the mechanism I can ensure or the degree of freedom I can ensure. So to give joints, so here I have option joints. It is not constrained, whereas previously we were using constraints. That means we had to give n number of different uh, constraints like mate, insert, all that. But here in Fusion 360, it is joint. So once you select joint, again, the best part, if I move the mouse near any component, you can notice here how many number of points or snaps software is allowing me to select. Right, whether it is center, this midpoint, this face point. So whichever the point I want to select, I can select. So now you can also notice the grounded main frame turned to transparent. Okay, so now I have to select the point or the location from the existing component here. So I'm going to select this center and I'm going to select this center. Now software has highlighted this main frame. Now I'm going to select this center. Clear? So once after you select, and I hope you have noticed this animation on the screen. So this was showing a rigid joint. So what about the mechanisms, the motion? So inside the same joint, here you can see the motion. So where we can provide different type of motion, just like our real life scenarios. So you can provide the motion, but that is nothing but the degree of freedom. So now basically by default, it has selected rigid. If I select Revolute, so it will rotate within the same axis. Again, Revolute in which direction? Revolute in which direction? So here you can see the axis. So right now it is rotating in one axis, Z axis. If I change it to X or I can change it to Y, but all this not required. This is basically it is supposed to be rigid. So I will just change it to a rigid joint. So that's the beauty of this technology, right? So now, so I have provided the motion for this. The same thing to this face plate. Here also I'm going to select join. I'm selecting this top this center and I'm selecting this center, right? Again, it is taking rigid joint, but this component is going inside, no problem. Within the same joint, I can flip the direction. I can flip this direction, then motion. Here, I'm going to provide the type of this motion as revolute. Very simple. Once after I select OK, even if I try to move this component, it will just rotate within the same axis, the degree of freedom, what we have given. Right? So I took about 10 minutes to create these two component, converting that component into a, uh, so converting that body into component, then I have renamed that and I have given join as per the requirement. Now, if you look at this, my dashboard, my dashboard doesn't have these two components, right? This is part of this file now. So I want to save this as a separate component. I can right click on this. Now here, I can select export. I can save this face plate within the same project file of 3D format. I can say export. Okay, so Basically, it took very few minutes for me to create body using the reference, then converting that into component. Then I have given a joint so that I can analyze my mechanism, right? So now, coming back to this uh, project again. So these two components, so I have used top-down method the same way. I have already designed just to save time. I have designed a couple more components here. 
So I'm going to insert all this one by one. So I'm going to insert this collar. And uh, this collar is supposed to be on the left side here. So I'm going to give join, capturing this position. Okay, so I'll select this circular face and I'm going to select this circular face. Then I will flip this outside. Okay, so the previous joint we have given Revolute, so software will just continue the same thing. So Revolute joint, I have given the location. Within few seconds, I have completed this one. Now I'm going to import the pinion shaft. Again, this one is very simple again. Join. So here, so there are two circles because there's a chamfer here, if you notice, right? I'm going to select this inner edge of this pinion shaft. Then I'm going to select this collar edge. Okay. Clear? Okay. So by selecting okay, so within few minutes, few seconds, you can give the proper relative motion between the components using joints. It is not constrained. That is the best part with Fusion 360. So we are giving joint between the components so that we can ensure the degree of freedom what is required. So now, the another one, I'm going to insert this lever arm. This is quite interesting here, sorry. So this lever arm, I want to insert inside this pinion shaft so that I can rotate. But where exactly it has to be fixed? Because there is no instance here, there is no hole or something, but still, so software is intelligent enough. When I go to join, you can notice, I'm selecting this particular, okay, I will select this lever first. If you notice, when I move the mouse, software automatically highlighting the midpoint of this lever. There is no feature created inside this, but still software will understand the mid plane. So I'm selecting this mid plane and I'm selecting this inner face of this RAM here. Okay. Right. So once I select OK, now you can see the relative motion. If I try to move this lever, it is just going to rotate within this axis because it is connected to the pinion shaft and pinion shaft is connected to this collar. So here it is having the revolute joint. So it is just going to rotate within this axis. Right. So now the last but not least, I want to bring one more component here. So this one is RAM. So I'm going to insert this RAM to this design. Okay, sorry, just open this new file. Go back, so RAM, I'm going to insert into current design. Now, this is quite challenging. What exactly I want to do? I want to bring this RAM inside this space here. This RAM is supposed to slide up and down. Okay. And the gear facing should be this side. Okay. Because you can see the pinion shaft is inside here. Okay. So pinion shaft gear is this direction. So the RAM gear face should be towards this. And I want to bring this inside so that it can slide. So how much time it will take? How many constraints we have to give? So one thing I have to make it vertical, then I have to insert here, then I have to attach these two face so that it won't go any other direction, left or right. Then I have to give constraint to this face. No, those things not at all required. So it is very, very simple. So all I have to do, just have a look how easy it is. I'm going to use join. As I mentioned, 
software will give me n number of option to select the location if i move the mouse you can notice software is highlighting this particular face all the corner midpoint everything and the software is allowing me to select the face center can you notice here software is allowing me to select the face center i am selecting this face center then i am going to select this face center here right i am selecting this two face center now so this is horizontal i just need to change the orientation by default you can see the joint alignment angle it is showing 90 i will change this to zero okay and then the type of joint so the location is confirmed now no issue it is exactly inside this space and motion by default it is taking the previous one which is revolute i will change it to slider right so still there is a problem it is not sliding in the desired direction so i want this to slide top and bottom in the vertical direction but now it is sliding in horizontal but no problem as i mentioned earlier the direction here we can change so slide z axis i will change it to y axis right so now even if i try to move this you can see here it will just slide up and down within the space and the location where we have given the joint right so this software will give you a more powerful uh, features like join so just like in real life so how we imagine so we imagine right so this is supposed to slide so exactly inside here so whatever is your imagination in the same way software will give you the features which will help you to bring it to the digital screen all your ideas to the digital screen right so now there are a couple of very important things when it comes to assembly so one is when i try to slide this can you see this is just going inside this particular table plate in real life this should never happen so when i move this ram towards down it should stop exactly on the top of this table plate so how we are going to stop this so most of the people do the same mistake here there are two options available to do that so one is enable contact set another one is enable all contact set when it comes to design and real life there are couple of things as a designer you have to understand when we design we don't really think about giving the clearance between the components the fact so we need to give clearance but here there is no clearance but here there will be having a frictionless motion between two faces right so there will be frictionless motion because of the oil or anything we are going to apply here there will be frictionless motion but software cannot understand that frictionless motion software will understand there is a connect between this face and this face so when i say enable all contact set software will not allow you to move any component so what we can do so very simple here there is one more option very beautiful that is enable contact set i am not enabling all i am just saying enable contact set when i say enable contact set now software will allow me to create a new contact set between the components between the selected components not all so now after enabling now you can see there will be a uh, one folder here for the contact sets can you see here so once you say enable software will create this folder inside your browser and now i am going to select new contact set between this ram and this table plate i am not giving contact set between this frame or face plate i am giving between this ram and only the table plate 
Now, if I try to move, you can notice this will exactly stop above the table plate. Even if I try to slide further down, software will not will not move this ramp below the table plate. So that is what contacts it. This is very, very helpful when you are trying to analyze your mechanism. In what angle, in what distance it is going to stop the component. So this is very, very useful when it comes to safety also. Right? So you can provide this contact set. Now I can just slide this up and down. Okay. But the actual design, so everyone might be wondering, actual design, when you rotate the pinion shaft, this ram has to slide. Am I right? But how to do that? If you look at the way we have given joints, this pinion shaft I have given joint with the reference of this collar. This ram I have given joint with the reference of the body frame. So there is no relative relationship between these two components. Then how it can have the relative motion? Right? So what we can do here? Very simple. One way we have to give relative motion between every individual gear teeth, gear teeth here. So that is no way possible. The number of gear teeth you can see here and on the pinion shop. So it is very, very hard, very difficult to give the relative or the connection between every single face of this gear. So better software will allow me to provide the motion link between two joints. So one is sliding, another one is devolute. So we can give the motion link between these two. So selecting motion link, I'm going to select this joint, the sliding joint here. You can notice the blue color line, which is highlighting here. That, and I'm going to select Select this revolute joint of this pinion shaft. Okay. We're just giving the uh, preview of the motion, but based on the experience here, we have to give, if this pinion shaft is going to rotate 360 degree, so how much this ramp has to move? So based on my calculation experience, I just changed this to 50, 5, 0, okay and I select OK. Now, if you look at this, when I try to slide this ram, this pinion shaft is rotating here, or if I try to rotate the pinion shaft, the ram will slide. So this is how we can give the motion link between two components. So, by explaining all these things, I have created two component, a couple of joints, and I have enabled the contact set, right? And now, the next most important thing, when it comes to relative motion, okay, or when it comes to degree of freedom, that is purely based on the timeline. For example, when we are working on robotics and all, so the motion, how much time it is going to take, that is also very important. Right. So for that purpose, Fusion 360 is giving one very beautiful option that is motion study. When I select this motion study, so software will open this motion study time bar. Okay. So now which joint I'm going to study. So I'm going to select this uh, joint, the pinion shaft one, this revolute joint. I'm going to select that joint here or you can select it from the joints folder. So I'm going to select it from here so that I can understand this is for pinion shaft. I'm going to select this. Okay. Now, so first 20 seconds, okay, steps, 20 steps. I want this to rotate 90 degrees. Next 10 steps, I don't want any changes, so it should be flat. Next 10 steps, 
So I want this to come back to zero. Next 20, I will change this. This has to go up again. I will give it as 180. So next 10 seconds, no change, 10 steps. So next 10 step, it has to go back to zero. So this is how I want to analyze the mechanism, right? So now, if I just go back, I will make it speed, I will make it slow so that you can see on your screen, I repeated. So I'm just going to select this play. So how many steps required so that this time just go down and touch this table play? All these things you can analyze with the motion study. And this motion study is not for one single joint. Just to give an example, here we don't have enough uh, mechanisms or too many degree of freedom. Just to give an example, I can also select this uh, table plate joint. When I click on this, you can see that particular joint is also available here. So this also I can give as a uh, so rotate to 90 degree, then next 20 second come back to zero degree, then next 20 steps, I want to move this to minus 90. And again here, I want this to come back to 180, okay? Now you can notice, so multiple joints all together, you can animate or you can go through the motion study so that you can understand the time frame. So for example, if this is going down, at the same time, this table plate has to go to this particular location where RAM can move down. So something like that, anything you want to analyze. So multiple joints you can study on one single motion study bar. So this is the biggest advantage what we have with Fusion 360. So you can analyze multiple joints, right? So after this, the next most important thing here I wanted to cover so after creating all these things, the next step, I hope most of you are already aware of this particular module, which is animation. So this is not a um, movie or gaming animation, okay? So don't get confused. Uh, this, we call it as exploded view. So most of you have already experienced that maybe while repairing your TV or your uh, bike or something. So it is very easy to dismantle all the parts. So by the time you try to connect that, so then you find the difficulties. So which one is first, which one is second, in which direction I have to put. So all those confusions are there. For that, what we can do? So within this Fusion 360, as I mentioned, the same file format, I'm not changing anything. So within the same file, I'm just switching to animation. And this is very beautiful again. So within this animation, here you can see, this is the time bar here, okay? What happened? Okay. Story, new story, right? So I'm just moving this to three seconds and I go to the home view. So once I click on this home view, can you see here, there's a video symbol. So whatever I rotate or do, so that will be recorded as animation. Right? So first three minutes, all this. And next, I just want to select this particular face and move out. So I'm going to select, transform, selecting this plate. I'm just moving this outside. You can notice that is also taken as animation here, right? So I can change this. So what I will do, I will go till eight seconds. This rotating of this uh, view, I just want till three seconds. So this movement of the component, I want to start from two seconds till eight seconds.
right so very simple next component which are you want to move you can just move it and you can go to this transform function here so wherever you rotate for example i want to move this ram so i will just go to the side view so that side view has been recorded as a video here right and in between that time so how you want to move this particular ram you can select that you can just move it outside and select okay right so this particular thing so you can explode all these components one by one so however you want so then you can add annotation to this this is not very technical but very very useful when you are supposed to present your design to your customer or anyone so in that case so software will help you to create proper annotation and uh, uh, videos and that particular video you can just publish you can convert this into any video file format right so this is a complete uh, structured way so like starting from a simple frame we have created components then we are creating animation so motion study all that and going back to this just one thing i want to highlight here which is again very very important that is we have created our own components we have inserted given joints everything but what about the standard components for example nut bolt screws bearings so these are all the standard components so from where we are going to bring this component so we are we don't have to waste time on designing all this right so everything is available so where it is available very simple within fusion 360 so here when you go to insert you can find option available insert a manufacturer part insert 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 a manufacturer part by selecting this software will take you to the website in this particular website you can explore like n number of companies and their components everything right you can switch or you can search based on the company name you can search based on the component for example so in this particular case i want to insert a socket headed screw here and the size is uh, m4 so simply i can search here so m4 socket headed screw cap screw yes it's available here All right so is the company and of course uh, depending on the region you have to search for the companies i'm not sure about this uh, company whether it is available here or not i'm just giving an idea so where it is available so here for example i want to use this particular socket headed screw once you click you can update the preview here right so i'm okay with with all the dimensions so if software is highlighting here you can change the dimension okay so you can change this length so whichever is gray color you cannot change that is as per the standards you cannot change these things right so with this standard i want to use it on my fusion 360 so i will just click to autodesk fusion 360 open yeah so now that screw is available here so that is nothing but a component right so, so i can use just this just a quick one we see yeah. uh, a few similar questions and people want mm -hmm. to know what is the difference between a joint and a built in joint sorry 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 your voice is like joint and and a built in joint so built okay uh that is a very good question so just, just give me one second so after finishing this i will go through that sure. okay so now because i just have to cover uh, two more things uh, maybe after during question and answer session we will just go through that okay so coming to this uh, so i can just use this uh, joint here so i'm selecting this um, this screw face and i'm going to select this particular face here 
circular edge. So it is sliding, so I will change this to rigid. And it's not that difficult again, you can use this uh, pattern command. So you can pattern this to all this location or you can bring it one by one. So that is also possible. And last but not least here, I just want to highlight going to this uh, uh, drawing view, how it works. So there are two options. I just need to save this file first. I'm going to save the file. And now I can convert this assembly into drawing, but there are two options available if you notice from design, from animation. If you say from design, so this exact view will be available on your 2D drawing. If you say from animation, so within this animation, we have created the exploded views, right? So that exploded view will be displayed on your 2D drawing. So sometimes when we are supposed to create a bill of materials, so part identification, in that case, we use the exploded view on the 2D drawings. Or you can select from design. So I'm just using from animation. So I can select the uh, paper size, all that, then by selecting OK. Yeah, so it is taking a little more time. Right, so already we have, so this is the one, so I submitted few, so whichever the direction, so we can select that. And once I select the location, I just need to change this orientation, let me, change this orientation to different directions. So, okay, this is perfect. And the scale, I will change it to one is to 1.5. Right, you can select the location, okay. So software will convert this into 2D drawing. And where you can use this drawing for the further documentation, and this software will also give you like part identification. I can select whichever the components. So this part identification here, this is one. And uh, this one is, this part is seven. And this one is two. And what exactly it is? For that again, software will give you the table or we call it as part list. So by selecting this table, software will automatically generate the table where it will give the information of all the components. Can you see here? So in this case, you don't have to create the numbering. So software will create that numbering automatically based on the part list. So Badri, I think um, you have five minutes, so maybe you should give some time for Q&A. 355. If you are done, uh, hope uh, so. Hope this session is useful for you guys, so that uh, the innovation, so the ideas, whatever you have to bring it on the digital screen, and make sure it is working. So none of our products are just single component. So if even if you take a bottle, there are two components: the cap and the body. So uh, when you have different ideas, and if you want to bring it on the digital screen. So this software will definitely help you to execute the same and to ensure the working condition of your particular design and the mechanism, so which you can analyze before you manufacture. So how it is working, whether it is possible to move in this direction or not. So what is the limitation? So all those things you can consider, you can analyze on your digital screen before you go to manufacture all that. So with that, uh, so I hope, uh, uh, this is already too late, so it's 3.55. So uh, thanks for giving this opportunity. So let's open up for the question and answer session. Uh, so let me stop the screen and yeah. Awesome, thank you so much, Badri.
it was pretty an amazing session and a very informative nikhil asked the question how to design spring which will actually compress in motion study animation okay okay so this 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 one actually of course we can create spring but uh, we won't be able to study the animation on this because uh, uh, we still do not have this uh, dynamic motion study on fusion 360 but to create the spring and all we have options available on uh, design so uh, so what is that design name so just just give me a second um so there is a function here so forgot the name so while talking all this yeah so no coil, so coil yeah. function we have coil function inside the create drop down menu so which will help you to design the springs how to give distance constraint in a joint between two components like if we need to give some distance between two components example of piston cylinder assembly yes of course when you go to join so as i mentioned so like when when we were trying to align the ram so i have given the angle orientation from 90 i have changed that to zero in the same way so you also have option available that's called offset distance while creating the joint in the same dialog box you have option available to give the offset distance in x y and z direction so which will help you to create the clearance awesome let's go to the next question uh how can we animate the video at the time of study motion Oh, <laughs> I think already so got option to export that, publish that. Yes, so using third-party application, we can record the same. Okay, Tahir wants to know: Can we perform dynamic simulation? Ah, uh, no. At this point, we do not have. So maybe we can expect in future. Right. Uh, Shani has an opinion. Uh, he wants us to share this. this design file so he can practice with his team for the practice for assembly animation and drawings of course i am happy i can share these files no issue so okay avaram do let me know how we can share these files with the participants right so we'll put that link in the recording video recording so people can access that directly sure sure definitely i can share it with you right so rishabh wants to know what is a rigid group rigid group so where uh, like uh, when we are trying to analyze the components which we really do not want to move so which is basically uh, bonded components so that we call it as rigid group so basically it is helpful when we are working in terms of sub assemblies so we can make it rigid group so that we can analyze the remaining components right uh someone wants to know why this software is not highlighted to automobile industries because this is very user friendly so that you can answer varun <laughs> right i just want to add to this so basically fusion cc is a kind of new software right now and uh, it's more it's just like seven years so far for the operations and we have got a very good success so far and we are also coming with some great uh, accounts in indian demographic with the automobile industry so and as you said this is a very friendly software that's the feedback you also get from automobile industry and more and more people are getting used to it so definitely we are going to make a lot of noise in the near future all right one last question can we animate motion link in render workspace motion link in render workspace uh, uh, no at this point uh, but i i heard that uh, some people have tried to do some in a different way and all uh, but means like working on the design uh, screen itself with the high res taking the high res uh, uh, screen capture something like that but there is no uh, direct uh, uh, command or feature available in fusion right and uh, adding to that sometimes i do create my you know high quality rendered motion graphics with fusion so what i do is i create my joints and uh, you know it has to be a proper complete assembly and when you go to the rendering workspace first you have to render your design right and after that you get the option for motion study okay and in most studies it will give you the option to rotate the joint 
So in that case, it will ask if you want a turntable or you want a specific thing, a specific joint to rotate. And if you select, you have a sliding joint or maybe a rotating joint, it will just work like that. So it will just make a video for like approximately six seconds, right? You have to specify what kind of frame rate you want, like six frame per second, 36 frame per second, something like that. And accordingly, you'll get a small animated video, right? I sometimes share that in MP4 format and I use a third party uh, video editing software to increase the speed to make it look more uh, smooth. That's the thing I'm, I'm, I work sometimes. All right. Close this. All right. So thank you so much, Badri. Really appreciate that. And guys, if you are designing anything from aircraft, ship, cars, home appliances, or even children's toy, and you want to know if your product can break, overheat, change its shape when loaded, how to make it confined yet affordable, well, this is this is going to be the session for you. Simulation for 1560 is going to help you answer these questions and make better decisions throughout the design process. Tomorrow, we'll have Sanjeev Ghosh with us, who works as a senior technical specialist for Autodesk in India. He will walk us through with the do's and don'ts of simulation workspace. Well, if you want to reach out to us, we are very much active on social media, specifically Instagram. So Fusion 360 India is our handler. If you have any other questions, or if you want to uh, work on some collaborative projects, you, will, you can reach out to me on my handler. Well, thanks again. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Badri, Anand, Ramesh, and uh, Rohit is also with us. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.